Welcome back into the mock draft for the Grand City Media's Ooh, 2024 mock draft. I'm so excited for this because I feel like this is the video that everyone has been waiting for. The number nine pick goes to the Memphis Grizzlies. Joining me to represent the Grizzlies is our good friend, DeMichael Cole. DeMichael, welcome. Hey, hey, good to be here. Happy to be here. What shoes do you have in the background there? Um, These are some, some, some blue and white ones I got right here. Grizzlies. So, you know, and I got my, my, see what you, it's very clear what my favorite color is. So, Grizzlies. Yeah. It was meant to be. It was meant to be, wasn't it? All right. Let me set the scene for everyone. Um, The Grizzlies have a pick in the lottery, the number nine overall pick. So, we've been going through this to Michael, and each time I kind of set the scene for everyone who, like, maybe didn't watch the Trailblazers or maybe didn't watch the Spurs all year. And I'm like, hey, this is like, kind of what they look to do. They've stacked some young talent. The Grizzlies are in a very different situation simply because last year is this weird outlier of every player being injured. So Mm -hmm. it's not like Portland where, you know, they had a a top three pick last year and then they've kind of got a bunch of young talents and they're starting their rebuild. The Grizzlies are not in a rebuild. You just had a really bad season last year with a ton of injuries. So it's a cool opportunity for the Grizzlies to come in and add talent on a team that's already very talented. Um, And there are 7,000 billion different ways that you could go with this pick. So before I put you on the clock, I'm going to ask you which direction you think the Grizzlies go. Do you think they go, hey, we need this position, this position, we need some depth. Do you think they go, hey, we're at number nine, let's pick someone with the highest ceiling. Which direction Mm -hmm. do you think the Grizzlies go with this pick? The Grizzlies aren't looking for anyone to put on training wheels. I, I think, you know, as you just said, they're in a different position than some of these other lottery teams. From a talent standpoint, we've seen most of these players on the Grizzlies team be on teams that finished number two in the West, win 50-plus games. So that's probably going to be the expectation going into next season, to be on a 50-plus win team. A lot of these other teams are trying to find building blocks, pieces like that. The Grizzlies have building blocks. They have John Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., Gigi Jackson, Vince Williams, They have the building blocks. Now, to me, the position that the Grizzlies are in, they're trying to find the complementary pieces. And the areas that they're weak, uh, which there aren't many, they're trying to find players that cover up some of those weaknesses, whether it's shooting, whether it's rebounding, whether it's uh, another rim protector, as Zach Kleiman said in the past, you know, another big. uh, That's what I think the Grizzlies are focusing in on. Uh, They want someone who's probably going to be ready to come in and play uh, day one rather than someone they'll have to send down to the G League and, you know, uh, probably won't see much of this season all right that being said let's put michael cole on the clock representing the memphis grizzlies put on your your adam silver voice yeah let's go with the the whole thing i'll do the whole breakdown with the ninth pick in the 2024 nba draft the memphis grizzlies select dalton connect shooting guard slash small forward out of the university of tennessee All right. I had a feeling we were going to go here. So let's break this down for a second. Okay. Um, SEC player of the year. He's a six, six shooting guard. He averaged 21 points per game, five rebounds shot 40% from the three 46% from um, the field. He's probably, probably the most polished like offensive player that there is in the draft. He's great at catch and shoot. He can shoot off the dribble. He's a vertical finisher when he gets, uh, to the Ram, he's a willing passer, all these really, really, really good things. I'll go to concerns after, but all the good things that I'm spewing about him, how does that fit into the Grizzlies offense? It's a perfect fit because uh, what the Grizzlies need is, as I just said, complimentary players. You think about the way that Ja gets downhill. You think about the way that Dez can get downhill. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, you know, face-up game and the way he's kind of developed uh, going to the basket. And and you need shooters around these type of players. You need very complimentary uh, pieces. Here's the thing about the Grizzlies. As good as they've been over the past four or five seasons, they haven't finished in the top 15 in three-point shooting under Taylor Jenkins. Uh, The highest was 17th. Uh, a couple years ago during the 56 uh, win season. Outside of that, they've been below uh, 20. They've been in the lower third of the NBA in three-point shooting. The last time that the Grizzlies as a franchise were in the top 10 in three-point shooting was 2006-2007. So 
you talk about Desmond Baines elite shooting. Uh, you got Luke Kennard uh, still in the picture right now. And then if you add Dalt Connect, to me, that gives you three elite level shoes. Guys where, you know, if they're wide open, you can just go back to the running to the other end and say, oh, yeah, that's a bucket. You have a couple other guys like, you know, uh, I think Vince Williams, you can trust him uh, to a decent degree and a couple other guys as well. But Dalt Connect gives you a certified elite score. And then to another level, uh, he's a big guy. Like he's six 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 seven. Uh, 220 plus pounds. And the thing about that that stands out to me is if you watch his college highlights, uh, there's several tape of him. You know, when he goes against the bigger guards, he's going off the dribble. He's using his quickness. When he goes against the smaller guys, he has a very good post-up game. That plays really well because what you'll see is, let's say he's on the floor with John Moran and Desmond Bain. Teams will try to put their top two defenders on Ja and Dez, and they'll try to hide their weakest perimeter defender on whoever that spot-up shooter is. Uh, right now, that probably would be a Marcus Smart Vince Williams. But uh, if it's him, if it's Don Connect, he has the ability to go in the block, post up on those little 636 guards that they try to hide, and he's shown in his SEC uh, tape that he can uh, dominate those matchups. So I think he fits uh, in, in all of those areas. He'll be a, a great uh, complimentary piece on the Grizzlies. All right. You sold me. You've made me excited for this. But now let's talk about just some of the concerns. OK, now mm -hmm. there's two glaring concerns. Mm -hmm. One is his age. He's 23 years old. And so the question is, how much potential does he still have left in the tank? And now I say that with like an asterisk next to it, because, look, we got Desmond Bain when he was yep. older in the draft and mm -hmm. that worked out. So that's like one way to look at it. Two is his defense. Um, he's not like like I said one of the best offensive players like ready packaged together that there is in the draft defense isn't perfect but yep. right now you do have two former defensive players of the year on the team so i'm wondering if that kind of outweighs the lack of elite defense that you're getting from dalton mm -hmm. um, so i want to know if either of those two things are concerning at all to you uh, the age thing isn't a concern for me simply because you're not going to ask him to be a superstar. Now, if he was going to a developmental team where, you know, uh, they're drafting guys and they're hoping, you know, he, they're signing them to a max rookie extension in, in three or four years, be different. But in Memphis, you have those guys already. You just need someone who's going to be able to play off of them well and be a very good role player, which I think uh, he already has some of those capabilities. So the age doesn't concern me because I think he has a high floor more so than you know we can talk about the ceiling but I don't think his ceiling really matters in this case it's more about if he reaches the high level floor where he's a double digit scorer consistent three-point shooter the Grizzlies win uh they win in this case now uh defensively there are some concerns there uh and again so he has good size right six seven yeah. you know you, you can play him against multiple positions and whatnot. Uh, the foot the foot movement, you know, the lateral movement and things like that, there are some questions there. But at the same time, if you want to counter that point, you can say he had a very high usage at UT. And there have been several cases in the past where guys are in college, they have very high usages, and then they come to the NBA and they play a, a lower usage offensive role, and then their defense take, goes to a next level. Uh, the first guy that just popped in my head is Nikhil Alexander-Walker. You go to him – uh, in college, uh, he wasn't really projected to be this amazing defender, even though he had good measurables and whatnot, because at when he was in college, I think at Virginia Tech, uh, he did a lot of offense. Thing. He he carried the offense. Uh, there's a case of a lot of guys like that. Uh, and in his case, it's the other way around. He had a, a very high offensive usage. Now, when he goes to the league, if he plays with the Grizzlies, they're not going to ask him to do too much offense. So a couple pick and rolls here and there, just here, catch and shoot. Basically, he'll be able to reserve a lot of his energy for the defensive end, which will lead to more effort. He has good size. I think he's he's strong. And um, we'll see, you know, how that translates. I still think it's a moderate concern. I'm not expecting him to be any type of lockdown defender by any means. So uh, maybe that limits the potential on him as a starter. You know, maybe he's just a good reserve because he's not a, a potential lockdown defender in any in any case. But, uh, yeah, I think those concerns are kind of valid. But the age one, I'm not too uh, worried about. All right. Thank you, DeMichael. One of, of our course. very first videos together, even though we see each other. Yeah. Every single game with the Grizzlies. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you coming on. This has been really fun. And we are less than a month, less than less a couple months away yeah. from seeing what actually shakes down in this NBA draft. So I appreciate your time very much. Of course. Anytime. Appreciate you.